Welcome to another Model A mini guide. Today we're going to talk about how to make a frame spreader. The frame spreader is typically used when you are taking an engine out or putting an engine in. The frame spreader has been known, I'm sure, for decades, but uh, I first found it published in 1989. So this is a page from the May-June 1989 Restore, which shows uh, Victor Duncan's design for a frame spreader. And this is the design that is typically sold uh, by the Model A vendors. Um, what you have is it's several pieces of pipe and flat bar welded together so that you're, you're pushing, you've got uh, this flange, which is sort of pushing on this side and then this one's pushing on the other side of the frame. And you've got threaded uh, bar, all thread here, and this nut, and you turn the nut, which pushes the all thread out. And then this uh, transmits the force to the other side of the frame and it pushes the frame apart. You only need to push the frame apart a tiny, tiny bit, um, an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch, a small, small amount. Um, and the, little offset here is because this fits over the top of the engine. So um, once you've kind of gotten everything off, you kind of uh, pop this over the top of the engine, just um, forward of the motor mounts, engage the nut, spread the frame apart, and the engine should come out or uh, go in, depending on what you're doing. Uh, however, this design has a couple of problems. First, it requires you to know how to weld. And I, don't, I shouldn't need to know how to weld in order to take my engine out. Um, so that's one problem. This design requires welding. He actually says, uh, the trick is to get one made up well ahead of time so it'll be ready to use when needed. Well, that's another problem because you've either got to make this up ahead of time or you have to order one from the, the vendors. And uh, at the time of this recording, all of the vendors are out of stock on frame spreaders. And so if you are taking your engine out, uh, and you don't already have one, and you don't know how to weld, you don't have a lot of options. So uh, today we're going to talk about how you can build a different design for a frame spreader that I am not going to pretend is as nice as Victor Duncan's. It is less elegant. It is much more of a pain. But it is one that you can build with minimal skills on extremely short notice uh, using stuff you have around the shop or that you can get from the hardware store. All you really need is uh, you need to be able to cut metal with a hacksaw. Um, you need uh, to be able to drill holes in metal uh, and make measurements, and that's really it. Um, so let's get started. So the first thing that you're going to need is... Um, this, it helps to have some uh, perforated, or they call it punched, um, square uh, tube. So this one looks like it's a little bit longer than the camera can see. Um, but this one is uh, 24 inches long. Uh, and you could go longer, 25, 26. I would not go shorter than 24, but you, it's okay to go longer than 24. Um, and it's, uh, it's got holes punched in it already for five sixteenths bolts. And uh, this particular one is one and a quarter inches on a side. It doesn't need to be that big. Uh, this is just what I had around the shop. So this is your base. And then for, uh, it, to attach to this, you get uh, two pieces of uh, perforated angle iron. Um, and uh, these don't have to be very strong. These are pretty, these are pretty thin. Um, but uh, what you're gonna do is you want these to be, I believe these are, yeah, these are each a foot, these are each a foot long. So two pieces a foot long of this perforated angle iron. And uh, what you're gonna do is kind of in the middle of them, uh, you're going to just, just put some, uh, some bolts, and nuts, and these um, are going to act as uh, dowels, basically, because uh, you're going to be you're going to be putting a scissor jack on here. You're going to be putting a scissor jack on here, and scissor jack's not too stable, 
So what you're going to do is you're going to bolt these on either side, just run bolts through, and, um, and that's going to provide a platform for your scissor jack. And then when you put the scissor jack on here, these little dowels you made are going to hold it stable. And if your scissor jack has a different design, you know, you can kind of uh, uh, iterate on this. So that's the first thing. And uh, for your fasteners, generally you're going to need, um, I'm, I'm working with mostly 5 sixteenths. This is what I had around the shop. You can see they're kind of mismatched. I have a couple of quarter, uh, quarter inch bolts. And I have one uh, that is this. Uh, so these are 5 sixteenths, and these I think are an inch and a half. Yeah. These are inch and a half. Uh, I would go with inch and three quarters or two inches if I were doing this over again. Um, but inch and a half will work. The main thing that you want to look for is you want bolts that have shoulders. Um, and on your three inch one, you really want two inches of shoulder because. Um, there's going to be some very uh, strong forces pressing on these, and so you want those to be pressing on the shoulder instead of on the thread. So you can see I've got I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six five sixteenths bolts with nuts to fit them, and then two uh, quarter inch bolts with nuts to fit them, and one um, uh, five sixteenths that is three inches long. Uh, and this, again, this is just what I had around the shop. And then you're also going to need, this is in addition to these, these little dowels right here, which can be really anything. But you're also going to need six thick washers. See, these are, um, these are an eighth, I think roughly an eighth of an inch thick. And they are the ID, the ID is five sixteenths roughly, and the OD is an inch and a half. So inch and a half, thick washers, you can get these at Home Depot or whatever. So you need six of those, and then you need one washer that is an inch outer diameter uh, and five sixteenths inner diameter, and this can just be any old washer. All right, so to get these, get back to this, we're gonna bolt this together um, with bolts that go through here. So I'm going to do that real quick. Okay, so you got this platform bolted together such that your scissor jack will sit there and not move around. So you can put the scissor jack away for a minute. The next thing you need to do is to get some uh, square tubing that is it can be perforated or non-perforated, but it has to be pretty strong because this is where uh, the most force is gonna be. So uh, I don't know if you can see, but um, that's fair. that one's fairly thick. I think this is, uh, yeah, this is eighth of an inch thick. Yeah, this is eighth of an inch thick. I don't think it actually has to be eighth of an inch. I think you could go with, um, slightly smaller than this, but, um, or slightly thinner, but this works. The, the important thing is the measurements. So these are, these are exactly 21 inches long. Each of these is 21 inches long and they've got, uh, holes drilled at the, um, the center of this hole is half an inch from the end. This one is three inches from the end. And then this one is half an inch from the other end. Uh, and so you need two identical uh, pieces of square tubing, 21 inches long with holes in these places. Then the last thing you need is um, some pieces of, this can be a uh, flat uh, steel bar. This can be aluminum, flat aluminum bar. Um, this is aluminum that has a little bit of an angle on it. And again, that's just what I happen to have around. It can really be anything because these pieces are only going to be in tension, uh, meaning that the only force on them is gonna be 
pulling pulling along the axis of the piece. And so um, really anything, steel, aluminum, whatever, is going to be strong enough to withstand those forces when it's applied in tension. So it doesn't really matter. This can be this can be anything and you should, I like making it out of, out of aluminum because aluminum is light, it's easy to work, it drills easily, it cuts easily. Um, so that's why I use aluminum. But, um, so for these, these should be uh, 20 inches long. So the, the previous square tubing was 21. These need to be 20 and you need a hole these are all 5 16 holes. Um, you need a hole at half an inch, center of the hole at half an inch. And then up here, you can see this is a pretty ugly hole. And the reason for that is that um, this distance is going to be, this distance probably will vary from one car to the next because this is the distance from the ground uh, to your frame or to a particular point on your frame. And so depending on, you know, your, what tires you're running, how inflated those tires are, uh, your springs, how high your springs are, uh, there's going to be some variation here. And, uh, I, you can see, I kind of made a number of attempts here. Um, and it's also hard to measure exactly. So you'll probably end up with something like this, but just for reference, uh, these are the, um, the center here looks like it's at roughly 18 and five eighths ish or 18 and three quarters, somewhere in there. Um, so this is something you'll probably have to do a little bit of trial and error on yourself, but so you need two of these identical ones with a hole down here and a real messy, yucky hole up here somewhere. So now we can get started on assembly. And what you're going to do is you're going to assemble your aluminum flat bar to this second hole uh, on the um, on the square tube. And for this one, this was the one where I used my quarter inch bolts, but um, again, you don't have to, you could just use 5 sixteenths for everything. I was kind of getting impatient. I didn't want to drill for 5 sixteenths through thick square tubing, so I just didn't. And one thing to notice here is when I'm assembling these, wherever the um, force is going to be, so here I'm, I'm bolting this flat bar to the square tubing, so the force is going to be pulling right here, kind of right at this interface, that's where I'm putting the part that has the shoulder. So the, the threaded part's going to go in, and the head of the bolt and the part with the shoulder are going to be are going to be right here, right where that interface is, where all the force is going to be. And then this other side is really just to Keep it from falling out. And here for these, uh, you you can be hand tight here. Uh, you can always tighten it up later if you want to, but we'll just go with this. So there's one unit. And then the other thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to put these washers on like little casters or little wheels. So I'm going to put bolt through washer through the end, another washer, nut. And these I'm actually gonna, these I'll tighten. Okay. All right, so there's one unit. You got your casters on the end. You see how, you can see how the washers protrude out beyond the edge of the square tubing. Uh, that's on purpose. It's so that um, basically what you're going to do is these are going to go up inside the frame, kind of into that C-channel like this, and you're going to push out. So I wanted uh, I wanted that to be a smooth kind of a rolling motion uh, so it doesn't catch on anything or, or scratch 
make scratches in the frame. So, all right, there's one of these, um, and now build a second one. Okay, so before we leave the bench area, I just wanna show you, these are all the supplies you need. Uh, you got your square tubing with the casters on the wheels on one end and the aluminum flat stock uh, bolted on a hinge. So you got two of those. And then you've got this long uh, perforated square tube with these uh, lightweight angle perforated angle iron on it with these little dowels here. And then you need uh, your scissor jack uh, and the crank. Um, and then you're gonna still, you should still have one long, one three inch bolt and two uh, two inch bolts. And then you should also have two thick washers and then one regular washer. So as long as you've got all that, uh, we're ready to proceed to uh, under the car to get this assembled. So just to get you oriented, we're here under the car. Here's your uh, radius rod. Um, and here's the ball cap. Here's the flywheel housing, bell housing, tailpipe, and the uh, oil pan. So where you're gonna be setting up is basically directly underneath uh, the radius ball. So first you're gonna position your, your base basically right underneath the radius ball and position your scissor jack on top. Again, right underneath with the crank pointing toward, you know, whatever side of the car you're on. And now you're gonna take one of your hinged arms and take the aluminum bit and slide it over the tailpipe, basically like that. Get a position right here. So you'll see that the end of the end of this bar is down at the um, at the base, and the end of the square tubing is resting on top of the scissors jack, and the top is basically up, wedged in the channel of the frame, right there. Kind of hard to get a camera up in there. You can see better on the other side. So once uh, this is in position, you want to go ahead and attach this aluminum uh, bar to the base. Okay, so there we've got that side is attached to the base. So everything's ready on this side. Now we'll go to the other side. So now you're going to take the other hinged arm and you're just going to prop it get it right up in here so you can see how this uh these casters are just socking right up against the top of that channel in the chassis and uh we are that's the uh this one has floater motor mounts but those are that's where your rear motor mounts are going to be so right now you're looking toward the back of the car right there's your battery so these are just behind the rear motor mounts so you're gonna sock that up in there. And then what I would do, see how your holes are there lined up? So get a, get a bolt through those holes first, and you're gonna put a small washer between the two pieces of square tubing and the large um, thick washers on either side. And what those thick washers are gonna do is, um, is help make sure this doesn't slip off the edges. So there's basically the, the thick washers are gonna come down on either side of the scissor jack and help keep that in place. So you might have to spend a few minutes like finagling this into position, but get that bolt in there. And then once you do that, um, position the aluminum bar and get it, attach it to your square tubing at the base. So that's your next step. Okay. So you can see here we've got thick washers on either side and a thin washer in the middle and then you're bolted here and it's all assembled now this is the point at which you should go through with um, you know a box wrench and a little socket wrench and just tighten everything down now that you've got it all assembled just go through 
and tighten all of the joints. So uh, once you've gotten all of your connections tightened and everything's nice and sturdy, then you're ready to uh, spread the frame if you want, you know, if you're ready at that stage of the engine removal. Uh, I mean, I don't know if I have to explain this. You put the, put the crank in and just start cranking her up. And um, you'll start to hear the, you'll start to hear the frame creak. And uh, you may find that it's possible that this base will lift off the ground a little bit. That's okay. Um, you're not actually pushing against the ground. The scissor jack is pushing uh, against the base. So you can think of this as kind of like, a, kind of like a, you've got a rectangle, right? You've got three sides of the rectangle, and then you've got one side, which is hinged. And what the jack is trying to do is to push the hinged side straight. And when that happens, it's gonna force the ends of that side outward because they can't go up because they're held down by these vertical members. They can't go up, so they've gotta go out and it's gonna spread the frame apart. So now I'm gonna take you over to a car that's had the engine out already and we'll show you uh, how this actually does spread the frame. So I've set up this car. This is the car I took my engine out of recently, um, but it's uh, good for being able to see how the device works. Um, so uh, I've got this put in here that you can see the radius rod is just sitting there loose and I have a clamp or a, I have a spreader between the two uh, rear motor mounts and I'm going to crank it up and we'll uh, see if the if the spreader falls out and that'll be uh, proof that the frame is spreading. With the engine out it's easier to see how these hinged parts brace against the frame and just uh, roll as you um, as you crank them out. One thing to notice, see how this swings back and forth? It's not even really on the floor. It's the same device, but because the weight of the engine isn't on here, the car is, the springs have the car farther off the ground. That's why I was saying uh, you really need to find your own measurement for the height of these vertical members based on your exact circumstances. But it is okay if this is off the floor because again, as I said, it's just pushing against itself. Being on the floor is just handy for uh, keeping it stable while you're setting it up. So it's a working frame spreader. Um, notice that I had to kind of, because it was off the ground, I had to kind of brace it with my foot. So if that happens to you, um, yeah, you know, you can brace it or you can uh, put some, just some thin wood blocks under it to shim it. But anyway, um, that's the design. And hopefully this can save you if you are in a pinch and need to take your engine out and uh, don't have time or are not able to get the, the regular one, this one uh, should work for you. And I didn't, uh, I didn't say it was a great design. I just said it worked. <laughs>